OK, guys, I want you to check this news footage from Fox Primetime featuring Jesse Waters. Here, Jesse breaks down why Kamala Harris, after being the worst vice president in history, should never be voted for as the next president of the United States of America. Kamala's first solo interview on a major news network bombed. Harris came in 13th place on MSNBC. More people watched the WNBA than Kamala Harris. There's no appetite because we know what to expect, which is nothing. Kamala Harris isn't going to say anything for the rest of her life. Even if she wanted to, she's not allowed to. If you're looking for a vision, a plan, an explanation about her past, or even how she's going to accomplish what she wants to do, the only one who has the answer is Barack Obama. Maybe you'll run into him in Hawaii the place where he was born. Two days in a row, the New York Times agrees with Jesse Waters' primetime. Quote, basic and predictable questions with roundabout responses that did not provide a substantive answer. Elicited few details. A hard-hitting Harris interview is still yet to come. Even CNN says Kamala Harris's interviews are biased, boring, and predictable. What I can tell from this interview tonight which was really a home game. I mean, going on with this particular interviewer was like effectively interviewing with her campaign's press secretary. She had nothing, nothing new to say on the economy beyond this ridiculous pablum. You want to talk about aspirations and dreams? They're crushed in this country because of inflation and these kinds of interviews and the day that she had today are not going to solve it. She spent five days off the campaign trail preparing for this interview. And this is what she gave us. We have ambition. We have aspirations, we have dreams. A chance to pursue their dreams and aspirations. We can do more to invest in the aspirations, the ambitions, and the dreams of the American people. We're going to invest in the aspirations and the ambitions and the dreams of the American people. These are just buzzwords Obama's people tell her to say because she doesn't have a grasp of the issues and she can't be honest about her agenda because it's too radical to be electable. So the media has moved on to a new phase. Phase one was joy because she's not Joe Biden. Phase two was she's hiding from us, but that's OK. She'll eventually come around. Phase three was she had a great debate, but we still didn't learn anything. And we've arrived at phase four after a couple of interviews where she struggles to connect the dots. It's not her fault she doesn't answer questions. One could watch that and say, well, she didn't give a clear, direct answer. That's OK, because we are not talking about clear or direct issues. Kamala doesn't need to be clear because the issues aren't clear. What's unclear about the issues? <laughs> They've lowered the bar so much that Kamala not talking about the issues isn't her fault. It's the issues fault. <laughs> she was asked about making housing more affordable Pretty clear issue for people who can't afford a house. How clear was she here? Listen. Some of the work is going to be through what we do in terms of giving benefits and assistance to state and local governments around transit dollars and looking holistically at the connection between that and housing and looking holistically at the incentives we in the federal government can create for local and state governments to actually engage in planning in a holistic manner that includes prioritizing affordable housing. What's holistic about housing? A yoga studio? And everyone gets 25 grand to buy one? That's going to cost $3 trillion. She said everyone that wants to start a small business gets a $50,000 tax credit. All right. So I'm going to sell pickleball paddles on jessiewaters.com and I can write off 50 grand? Johnny can sell fortune cookies on eBay and deduct 50 G's. Just like that. Kamala says inflation's a crisis, but it's Trump's fault. Then she says the border's broken, and it's also Trump's fault. What would a Harris administration do for those communities who've taken in many, many legal immigrants but are at capacity? Well, first of all, we do have a broken immigration system, mm -hmm. and it needs to be fixed. And if we take a step back, months ago, some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress came together with others, proposed a border security bill. Donald Trump got word of the bill, 
realized it was going to fix a problem he wanted to run on and told him to kill the bill. And my pledge is that when elected president, if the American people will have me, I will bring that bill back and I will sign it into law. And we need a comprehensive plan that includes what we need to do to fortify not only our border, but deal with the fact that we also need to create pathways for people to earn citizenship. Kamala Harris let 20 million migrants into the country and spent three years lying that the border was secure, then blames Trump for not fixing it and says she's going to give everybody citizenship. How are you going to fix the border? And her answer is sign a bill that didn't fix the border and can't pass. Oh, and then mass amnesty. Everybody we let in gets to stay and vote, she says. Biden and Harris are already doing it. Look at this. With an election looming, the U.S. is approving citizenship applications at the fastest speed in years. Kamala's interview yesterday was so bad, Mark Cuban was sent out by the campaign to clean it up. I don't think you're going to have an open southern border. No, I agree. And she agrees, too. She said the exact same thing. She you, had a chance. Yeah, but, Joe, you know there's a lot of CE, COOs that when the CEO leaves for whatever reason, come in, take over, and have completely different policies and approaches, right? That's just the way it works. When you're second in command, you do what your boss tells you to do. He but, delegates authority to but you. But the border was supposed to be her. Yeah, but it's still the same thing. It's his policies. Biden wanted to open the border. Kamala was just following orders. She's just so loyal. But now she's an independent woman. And for the first time, she'll be going to the border tomorrow, right before the election. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the election. Trump says, eh, eh, not so fast. For nearly four years, we have been living through the worst border crisis in the history of the world. There's never been anything like it which has brought untold suffering, misery, and death upon our land. The architect of this destruction is Kamala Harris. 325,000 children. Think of that. Three and a half years. She lost 325,000 children. Kamala Harris intends to stand before the American people tomorrow and lie. She's going to lie just like she did about her job at McDonald's, just like she did about the 818,000 jobs that they created that were fake jobs. They didn't exist. It's a fraud. And tomorrow she'll make a case that, oh, she did a fairly good job. You can't say much. Uh, you can't justify it. She should save her airfare. She should go back to the White House and tell the president to close the border. Trump's been boxing her in all week like this. Before her economic speech, he hit up grocery stores and factories. At, hey, where have you been, Kamala Harris? Before Kamala goes to the border, Trump comes out and asks, so what took you so long? Fix it now. How can you trust the woman who broke the border to fix it? How can you trust Kamala Harris on anything? She told Oprah, if you break into her house, she's going to shoot you like Dirty Harry. But in 2007, when she was San Francisco DA, she sponsored a bill to confiscate every handgun in the city. Residents would have four months to surrender their firearms. And then Kamala and the government would come and take them. It was such a radical gun grab that even the gun control lobby was skittish. She bragged about going into Americans' homes for their guns. Just because you legally possess a gun in the sanctity of your locked home doesn't mean that we're not going to walk into that home and check to see if you're being responsible. This is a woman who wants to seize your handguns by force while she lets violent migrants into the country who are going to be allowed to vote when she gives them amnesty. Oh, and they'll be given $25,000 checks to buy homes in your neighborhood. Oh, and they'll also be getting free sex changes on their way in. She wants to give sex change operations to people in detention that came in illegally and are classified as illegal migrants. If they want a sex change operation, she said, that's okay, we'll do that. <laughs> this is a radically dark vision for the United States. She is the most committed leftist a major party has ever nominated in the history of this country. And what's even more dangerous is she's just so casual about it. Private health care, eh, just get rid of it. American oil, ban it. Free speech, eh, shouldn't be allowed to say that.
Your 401k went up. Oh, we're going to take some of that. Your gun, give it to me. Girls' locker room, sorry, not anymore. Schools during COVID, shut them down. Prisoners, let them out. Prostitution, legalize it. Heroin, decriminalize it. That's <laughs> how she talks. The ignorant breeziness with which she just rips your rights away is pretty scary. This lady with power, she'll be out of control. There'll be no checks on her. Someone whispers something to her ear, fine, do it. No thought at all. Harris is having a bad day, watch out. Kamala Harris is like a child. She hasn't put a single thought into anything and says whatever it takes to get a cookie. She doesn't share, she tattles. And on top of that, she's mean. And she's not allowed to sit at the grown-up table, no way, because she can't behave. She's coddled, spoiled, and she's sheltered from real life. She's like a child actress. Feed her the lines and cash the check. Here now, Trump 2024 senior official, Corey Lewandowski and former assistant secretary to the Treasury for public affairs, Monica Crowley, ladies first. We're not going to you ever. <laughs> <laughs> Monica, you heard Kamala Harris last night. No one watched. No one even cares anymore. They're tuning her out. Tomorrow, she's going to the border. What do you expect to see? Well, I think it's a huge strategic mistake for Kamala Harris to go to the border uh, tomorrow. She has been the border czar now for nearly four years. We've had 20 plus million illegal immigrants cross that border and come into the country otherwise illegally, all on her watch. The idea that she would go to the border and now at this late date profess that she has some sort of concern for enforcing the border uh, and try to reform the illegal immigration system when she was sitting atop and creating created this cataclysm now for almost four years is patently absurd. Also, just from a strategic point of view, if you're running a presidential campaign, you do not want to attract attention mm -hmm. to the issues that are your key vulnerabilities, right. Right? right? So the idea she's going down there with all the cameras and all the press like, focused like Trump on going her. To Planned Parenthood. <laughs> well, exactly. It's her most right. epic failure right. and is probably the issue that's going to torpedo her. Uh, in this election, and she's going to draw more attention to it. Donald Trump's schedule, Corey, has changed. He is much more active. He's doing a lot more retail politics, and it seems like he's lapping her. Whenever she's about to do something, he's kind of already done it. What's that about? Well, listen, Donald Trump is the greatest fourth quarter player ever to play the game, right? You want the ball in his hands when the game is almost at the end. And he is now gearing up for what is going to be the 40-day run. So what was supposed to be one day of events is now three, four, and five events in a row on the same day. And you see him going to Wisconsin on Saturday and then down to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And then, you know, originally the campaign was going to have a slower day on Sunday. He said, no, put four events on the schedule for me on Sunday. So then it's Sunday, it's Monday, it's Tuesday. You saw him yesterday in North Carolina, the day before that in Michigan, the day before that in Pennsylvania, the day before that in Georgia. Donald Trump is on this tenacious job of just telling his message to the American people. And, and you're and saying he's going to be at the Alabama Georgia game. He is. All right. And he's, he's, he's not going to he's not going to run out into the field or anything like that. He's going to be in a suite. He's going to be eating. He's going to be behaving himself. I can't comment on that, Jesse. <laughs> Listen, they're going to love him down there. You know that this is a huge game. It's a huge college football game and they are going to love you. Wait till you hear the reaction of Donald Trump when he walks in that stadium in Tuscaloosa, it's going to blow the roof off. Where do you see Kamala Harris right now? She seems to have run out of options. She hid for a while, then she started doing interviews. The interviews aren't going well. What do you see her doing to close this well, she's, race? She's clearly running out of gas, and the gas itself was synthetic. Remember, this is a woman who has been groomed and set on this glide path to reach this kind of position, but there's no there there. Kamala Harris has severe imposter syndrome. She knows she doesn't belong in these high offices. She has been protected and coddled. She came out of San Francisco sure. and California, safe districts, safe states. Now she finds finds herself number two office in the land for almost four years. She was protected by the system. Now she's out there swinging by herself. And she's got the people who used to protect her now criticizing her, backing off. They're no longer protecting her. So she's going to continue the next 39 days in this campaign, continuing to hide. But I think that the jig is up, right? Like the American people see these absolutely vacuous interviews that she's giving. Yeah. There's no and, and they're there everywhere. There. You, you, no one sees it on MSNBC. More people see it on this show than on <laughs> MSNBC, and it's all over the internet. Imposter syndrome. 
It's like me Positive on the five. <laughs> I know I don't belong. <laughs> All right, Corey, thank you so much, Monica. Good to see you as you always. Bet. Sure.